And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. There's no question that if you picked what game has gotten the most hype in the last 365 days, it has definitely been Scythe. All right, this game has been, as soon as it was announced, people went crazy. The Kickstarter went crazy. People have been, like, just dying for it to come out. And I don't say that to be malicious at all because, well, it kind of deserves the hype for because it's from Jamie Stegmeier and Stolmeyer Games, and he has put out consistently both high-quality components and high-quality games. And then he used this fantastic alternate history in Russia, where they're walking around with pet tigers and bears and also have mechs, but this artwork is amazing. I use a lot of it as screensavers for my computer. That's how good this stuff looks. And then he started comparing it to Agricola and things like that, and people were like, so. The difficulty is when a game is hyped that much, then when it comes in, it has to live up to that hype, right? Well, that's the question we have today. Is Scythe as good as people were expecting to be? Let's find out. Okay, folks, so here is the board. Now, I want you to realize that as I'm talking about this game, I'm not going to be able to go over every little detail. There's a lot going on. I just want to kind of give you a basic feel. You notice how giant the board is. It barely fits in the frame of the camera. And if I flip it over, there's half of an even bigger board. You, they have some sort of Kickstarter goal or something to make the board even more giant. I am perfectly content with the size of this as is. Each player has a leader piece that they're going to start with on the board. These are different uh, models and miniatures, each leader comes with a different animal and you'll notice there's two spots without leaders that's a future expansion spot so there's five different factions that players will take now when players take a faction they're going to get a faction board that matches their leader there's going to get a whole bunch of pieces of that color um, and when they take their leader let's say they take this leader here they're also going to get four mechs that they're going to be placing on this board these mechs are similar I mean everyone basically has mechs Although you'll notice that there's a different model for each player's mech, which is um, something I'm always a big fan of. Uh, so uh, I think the I, li I like the yellow one first. I know it's a wheel underneath it, but I like to pretend it's a saw blade. Now, as the game progresses, these mechs are all the same for each player. But as you put more each mech on the board, you will get a special ability that applies to all your mechs and to your leader. So once all your mechs are out, you have a lot of special abilities that you can do. So players are going to be taking a faction. Now, let's talk about victory. This game is all about popularity. You want to be popular. And so players are going to start with a certain amount of popularity as evidenced on one of their boards. And they're going to be trying to raise that, although it will also be lowered as the game goes by. Players are going to be trying to do different goals over the course of the game. And so you can see here at the top, up here, there are different goals that you can do. For example, if you get all of your mechs, all four of your mechs out, then you've accomplished a goal and you can put a star there. If perhaps you build all your buildings, you'll put a star there. And maybe you have won a combat against someone, there's a star. Or get your popularity all the way up to 18. Or get your power all the way up to 16. Or accomplish one of your goals. Or get all eight of your workers out. Or get all four um, of the diff one of your discs out or get all six of your upgrades finished. So as you do these, you're going to be putting stars out. When someone puts out a six star, the game is going to be over. And that's the point where we're going to go back to this popularity chart and score. And you're going to get a certain amount of coins per each star based on where your popularity is. So my popularity is at seven. I get four coins per star. While if it's lower than that, I would get three and higher, I would get five. You also get points for each area you control, and you also get points for every two resources you have. And again, that all depends on popularity. But you'll be getting money in over the course of the game, so you'll be able to use that for, for end game scoring too. And there's a few other things, like there's a bonus card down here, uh, which will be different each game. Like so for here, each building you build, each mine that's next to a building is going to get, the more mines you have next to buildings, the more points you're going to get as time goes by. Or the more, um, in this case, I'm sorry, each building you build in a mine space will give you more points at the end of the game. 
So now you know kind of what you're going for. Each player is also going to start with a couple, and you'll notice as this whole game, just the absolute gorgeous artwork. Each player is going to start with a couple of goals, and you can pick one of these and try to accomplish that goal. So for here, you want to have build three structures, have seven popularity, and have no mechs. If you pull that off, you're going to get a star on the board. Here, if you control territory with nine or more resource tokens, and at least one of each type on it. Or here, be a pacifist, have no power, 13 popularity, and five workers. And so there's all sorts of these, and so you got to try to pick the one of the two that you draw that matches the way that you're going to play the game. Players are going to be moving workers around the board so that they can produce resources on different areas. These resources are going to allow them to take different actions, which are going to allow them to build more workers, to build buildings, to build uh, mechs, to just discover different things as they go around the board and win the game. Now each player is going to get one of these boards. These boards are all different. Again, they have that amazing artwork, but they really are different. So you're going to get a player ability, which gives you a special ability, and your mechs will have different abilities and starting some starting resources. And then you're going to get one of these, which will also give you some starting resources. And these are completely different. So there's 25 different combinations that you might be playing with over the course of the game. But this board itself, which you can see has the pieces of your color on it, is really the main focus of this game. On each of your turns, you are going to pick an action that you're going to take. You cannot pick the same action the two, two turns in a row. Well, one of the factions can. But for the most part, when you go to one of these spots, there's a top action that you can use, and then a bottom action. You can use one or the bottom, or you can use both of them. And these actions are going to change. So for example, in this first spot here, you can pay one coin to trade wherever you have one of your workers to put any two resources there. Or you can take one popularity. Here you can pay one coin to get two, two um, power points. Or you can draw a combat card. Uh, if you go over here, you can simply move two of your units or take a coin. And over here, you pay a certain amount, which right now is nothing, and you can produce on two hexes that you control where you'll get one resource or worker for each uh, worker that you have on that hex. The bottom abilities are really where kind of the game shines. You, this is where you will be paying the resources that you are gathering off of different tiles. And this one's really important here, the upgrade. Uh, here, I, this person can pay three oil and then they can upgrade. If they pay three oil, which will come off the board, in this game, you don't put your resource in front of you. They stay on where your workers and your mechs are, and you can move the resources around with them so they don't get captured by other players, but you can just spend them right off the board. So if I pay three oil to upgrade, I can take any one of these cubes at the top and then move it to the bottom. So let's say I take this cube up here. This now allows me to move three workers. That's a little hard to see with this building in a way. And I can move three workers instead of two. And then I can put this at the bottom. So now I can make my upgrade thing now only cost me two oil to use. Or maybe I want to put it here to make this ability only cost two of the iron. And so as the game goes by, you're going to be taking these cubes and making your top actions better, while at the same time making the bottom actions cheaper to do. So the upgrade action is a pretty neat one. This action over here lets you deploy mechs. So this is, if I have these two cubes down, a mech only costs me this. And so once a mech goes out, remember I said the mechs have different abilities. At the beginning of the game, your mechs can't cross water. They can only move one space. But there's ways that they can cross rivers and uh, get extra attack abilities and move two spaces. Here, you can build buildings. There's four buildings that are on your board. You can pick one of these buildings. This building, when it comes off, when you take this action, gives you a power point. This building will give you a popularity when you take this action. This building here puts a mine on the board. There's already mines printed on the board that you can that are basically adjacent to each other. This lets you go from this spot to one of those mines. And the windmill will help in your production. And of course, if you get all four of your buildings built, that's another star. And then finally over here, you can enlist where you can take one of these people and put it on your other board, giving you some bonuses. But also, whenever someone takes this action, the for example, the enlist action, you will get in here a power card. If I put this one out, Anytime someone else deploys a mech, I uh, get a coin. And not anyone, but the two people who are adjacent to you. So if you get these out as other players take actions, you will get to get bonuses for them taking those actions. And again, if you get all four of these out, you get a star. So this board is going to change. And as you get more workers on the board, your cost to produce is going to go up. Here now it costs me 
a PowerPoint and a popularity, and eventually a PowerPoint popularity and a, Q and a coin once all my workers are on the board. So why do you want power? Well, if you get your power up to 16, that gets you a star. But more than likely, you're going to want power because you're going to want to fight other players at certain points. Now, your workers can't fight. They can't even move into a spot with another worker. Um, but your mechs can. Now, they can just stomp all over someone else's worker. That will lose you popularity, but you can send their workers home. But if your mech moves into a spot where there's another mech or a leader, leaders and mechs can fight, then you fight. Each of you will take one of these wheels. This wheel goes up to seven, and you might have some of these combat cards, which are numbered two to five, and there's fewer of the fives than anything else, but there's just different numbers in the deck. And so you can take these, and you can play up to one card, so you don't have to play a card. So let's say I'm the blue player, and I'm going to play three in this. So my total power is going to be a seven. Whoever plays the higher power wins the battle. But when you spend power, you will use it. So you can't spend more power than you have. So that's why seven here has a red circle around it to show that's the most anybody can spend. So even if I'm at nine, the most I could spend would be seven. But when you spend it, you may not have it for another battle. Now players are gonna be fighting because they might wanna steal resources from someone else, because they just might want to control an area. As long as you have someone in an area, you might wanna control it, because you might wanna to get to a good spot on the board there's some spots on the board where your leaders will want to go that give you these exploration tokens. For that, you will draw an exploration card, which is more of the beautiful artwork. These can be only explored by your leader, but they give you three choices. One is a decent choice, like here you get a combat card and gain a popularity. One is a choice that's better, but costs money. So here, pay $2 to get any three resources. And one it usually hurts you with popularity. So here I pay three popularity, but I can put a mech out. And so each of these is completely different with really cool artwork. The artwork kind of tells a story and then, you know, are you going to admire the retired soldier's prize gun, hire the soldier, or steal the soldier's mech when he's napping? You know, which of these are you going to do as you go through and find these different things? And again, this showcases the art of the game. Also, if you go to the middle, there's a factory. Getting your leader to that factory is important because it gives you another spot where you can take actions next to your board. So here I can pay two coins and I'll get a mech and a PowerPoint. And then I can also move two of my figures in a board. So all these cards, and there's one more than the number of players, so they will slowly be depleted. So you, and you can only get one over the course of the game, but those will help you out. So that's basically it. There's some other things in the game, you know, some different minor rules, but for the most part, you're gonna be moving around, trying to produce resources, using those resources to make your action board better using the special ability, like for example here, uh, this, they can spend combat cards as resources, that this guy's workers can swim across rivers, most of the time you have to get river walk for your mechs, get the mechs to carry your workers across. This guy here, there's no, he can conquer as much as he wants, no, you can only get two stars from conquering, most factions he can get multiple. This guy, when he finds the encounter cards, can do two things on it instead of one. And this guy can do the same action more than once on the player mat. So there's a lot going on here, but once you start playing, it all does come together. Most money at the end, which is points, is the winner of the game. Okay, well, I'll get that out of the way right away. I mean, the game is good. It's very good. Now, um, I mean, I, I, I like how they, I mean, he, he stole a couple things that he's done from other games, and that's fine. The combat is actually very similar to the combat from the classic game that came out 30 years ago, uh, Dune, um, or was it 40 years ago? It's been a while since Dune came out, and that's great, though. That's, a, that's an excellent combat system where you have a certain amount of, a, basically, you have a resource to spend, and then cards to add. And I like that, because you can kind of mathematically figure out a, a combat. At the same time, you know how much they have, and they know how much you have, and then you're like, well, should I waste it all? I mean, I'm going to win anyway. And then they, you kind of have to outthink each other, so the combat itself is fun. Now, I do want to mention, though, combat is maybe... 15 to 20 percent of this game it's not nearly as much as you might think um, because you're really building up an engine this is much more of a euro style game where you're trying to get resources and everything and the combat is kind of tacked on because combat is really not worth your while a lot of the time you're not it's, you're not out to destroy the other player sure you want to conquer as much stuff as you can but you can leave yourself open you're spending your your power points to do so you might even be losing popularity and it's just not worth it to maintain long things you're trying to be an army 
the, the concept here is you're trying to be an army that the people love. That's the whole thing about the popularity. So combat is there, but it's like a, it's a tool that you're using. It's not the main focus of the game. And I'm fine with that. The, the, the part of this game that is just absolutely brilliant is that upgrade mechanism. I love that. I love the idea that there's those cubes at the top, and then as you bring, you, you bring them down, making the actions at the top better and making the actions on the bottom better. That's just a nice concept, and I like how each of those boards is different. So I get a board, and I'm like, oh, wow, upgrading is expensive for me this round. But building buildings is cheap, so maybe that's the route I should go. And if I build a building, what building am I going to build? Now, each turn you have only one action, and those actions play pretty quickly. The box says the game's 115 minutes. <laughs> Which I, <laughs> that's, that's so dorky. <laughs> 115 minutes and someone sit there with a stopwatch. Uh, so what, essentially they're trying to say, just shy of two hours. Now most games I've played have taken around two hours. Um, and that's for a game this weighty and a game this involved, that's perfectly fine. The, the quality of course is stunning. The artwork is, if this game is not, this game is going to be nominated for best artwork next year and I am, I would be surprised if anything beats it. You never know, but this game's artwork is off the charts. Uh, the miniature quality, it's okay. It's not stunning. I mean, five, ten years ago, we would have been super amazed by this, but there's a lot of much, much better miniatures out there. But it's not bad, and it does look cool that I'm walking around with a bear. Um, then moving the, the, your guys around and collecting resources, that's typical in a lot of games. And the way the end game scoring works, I thought that was pretty solid. There's different ways to go for stars. And you'll see this game, which I call an engine building game, because you're doing things and then you can do things better and then do things better. You'll see that it kind of starts, you're like, oh, it's going to take a while to, for this game to go. Then it starts snowballing and going faster and faster and faster. There are one player rules with automated things for the other players. I haven't played those, but do know that that is inside the box. There's lots of player references. The factions feel very different, especially since you get a player board. I mean, the, the replayability here is very high. Um, the upgrade is my favorite mechanism of the game. My favorite thing in the game are those exploration tokens. I love flipping over a card and having three options. It, it provides a lot of story to the game, and I can sit there and go, Oh, should I take that guy's mech? I really need a mech right now. But I'll lose popularity, but I really need a mech. All right, fine, I'll pay him to do whatever. You know, I, I, I like those. I almost wish there was more of those over the course of the game because you'll probably get maybe two, uh, possibly three. There's not a whole ton of them on the board. Um, but this game is pretty good. You know, I, I, I kind of come into games like this with hype sometimes saying, all right, you better live up. And if you don't live up, I'm going to be disappointed. But I'm not disappointed. It's really good. I am currently really seriously thinking about adding it to my collection. I think it's great. I know that they have more stuff planned, but for now, this base game is plenty fine for me. I don't have any of these extra Kickstarter stuff that, that there was. I don't care. This base game has a lot of cool content in it. So if you're looking for a meaty game that's very interactive part of the time, but also a lot of the time you're sitting there building my own thing, doing my own thing with cool combat, a great upgrade system, um, massively, I mean, you can't get better artwork than this, uh, just a, and a, a good value for your money. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up from me. That's Scythe. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Yeah. Yeah.